so. Yeah, okay. It loaded up right where we were last time. So, I did play a little bit of this on Saturday after finishing Soldier of Fortune 1. And all that we did was uh, walk into this room, kill this guy, and that's it. We didn't accomplish anything in the half hour I was playing it, except for killing that one guy. Uh, we did go down uh, to the hangar under here, and we're killed by a man holding something red. I don't know if it was a battery like what I'm holding right now, but I think it was. Uh, we went back in here. There's a guy with a blaster, and he shot and killed us. So, I'm not really sure what to do right now. I'm not very good at fighting. And we're running low on energy to keep healing ourselves. Let's see, was this battery completely out? Okay, so we have two partially used batteries. <sighs> Can't just leave this one here on, on the floor for now. Is this an elevator down? Looks like an elevator, but no idea. Oh, maybe it is. Okay, I'm um, I'm Iron Man now. Can we shoot? I can wiggle. So we're not any faster. But we are very loud and not very stealthy now. I found a machine in the base's main control room that's encased me in some kind of armored suit. It appears to be pressurized and airtight. Maybe we need that to pilot the ship in the hangar? Okay, we already looked through here, there's nothing to repair. Nothing new in there. Same thing? No, it's it is longer. Okay, yeah, so reactor access so two three four. But there's something horrible in the reactor room. Whatever was in cell block two and burrowed down there. immune to blaster fire, so that's awesome. An automated reactor maintenance robot. Okay, we did read this. We did read this last time. Yeah, it told us this. Um, the intruder must be evaded or neutralized. Power conductors attached to support pylons and lowered into the plasma field. To stabilize the reactor, the pylons must be individually unlocked from central reactor control station and raised out of the plasma field. So I guess we'll be running between the central reactor control station and each individual pylon while evading whatever this creature is. 
which does not sound fun. See, what is this thing? It's so much easier to interact with stuff that we aren't holding um, a battery. <laughs> Okay, this is nothing. Great. That's a lot of uh, terminals. Anyway. Uh. Come on, use it. Okay, sweet. What are these? Oh, it's a forklift. Okay. Do we have anything that can be forklifted? I don't know. Let's leave that alone for now. Okay, it's the same as the emergency button on that other terminal. So we got a cool sound, so I don't know if... Does that mean we got a journal entry? Did we just learn that? Well, I guess we can learn what a Mondite is. The following is the 1,985th installment of a 9,000-day collection of the wisdom of the third Mondite Prime Paragon. Whatever the heck that name is. The Prime Paragon is the living embodiment of the Mondite ideal. Whatever that guy is, lives a life of seclusion where he devo devotes all of his time to meditation and ponders the ever-deepening riddle of human and technological existence. The thoughts and actions of the Prime Paragon are always being continuously recorded and distributed wherever human societies exist, so his followers may benefit from his unique and enlightening insight. This catalog of the words of the Prime Paragon provides a daily thoughtful observation day 1861. Many years ago I saw the vision. It was clear and so real that its power obliterated everything else before my eyes. It began with one great ring. One ring to rule them all. Somehow I knew that this ring represented all of human life as it now exists or up until recently existed. Then another great ring appeared above it. It represented a perfection that was so permanent. Uh, and absolute that there was no imaginable human equivalent. It wasn't a static form of perfection, but one that was eternally improving and expanding. A perfection found only in machinery, which is continuously being upgraded, modified, and perfected. Just looking at the image of these two rings, I could tell that there was something missing. Something else needed to be added to complete the picture. Before my mind even grasped the comprehension of it, a third ring appeared. A circle that came from the... ...center that entwined and connected the other two circles together. The truth of it burned as bright as the sun. From that central circle, the Mondite movement was born. Day 1862. Before the beginning, there was nothing. And then from nothing came substance. But this substance was without value or meaning. Then came the true beginning. After the true beginning, there was life. And this life was microscopic, and it was fragile, and it was temporary. But it was this life that prospered. 
because it was good enough. Then came the endless time of the change, and from this change we emerged, and we gave meaning and value to the substance that is the universe. And as we gave the universe meaning and value, we did change it, just as it changed us. And when we did notice this change within ourselves, we named it evolution, and saw that it was good. And with those changes came computers and machines. Soon computers and machines began to advance in an evolution all their own, only at a much faster pace. Then came the Mondites, and with them came a new beginning, for in this new age the force of evolution alone is not enough. It is wielded like a weapon aimed directly at ourselves, and must be as fast as a computer and as sure as any mechanized machinery. So the Mondites called forth the Prime Paragon, and the people heard the words of the Mondites, and they saw that the Mondites were good. Day 1863. The following is a pronouncement from the Mondite Prime Paragon. Quite often, the Prime Paragon enjoys referring to himself in the third person as he speaks. Awesome. Day 1864. In the future, all those who are not augmented will be nothing. Okay, we're getting some Deus Ex. Day 1865. Political expediency must never be allowed to stand in the way of evolution. That also includes those who would do so in the name of alleged morality. Those who stand in the way of evolution in the name of morality are the most immoral of all. For, sh for slowing the progress of human evolution harms the entire human race. Day 1866. All people feel an impulse for self-improvement is based upon and very closely related to the hidden, deeply rooted impulse they have for self-destruction. Everyone desperately longs for obliteration to be followed by a recreation in a new form. If this were a perfect world, all of us, every one of us, would be replaced. Day 1867. It is good for an individual to be cultured. In the past, this was achieved by traveling to many places, but today that is no longer enough. Culture is really just the accumulation of fashion, so fashion must be accelerated to its absolute maximum speed, so that even without traveling, people are exposed to absolutely as much culture as they can endure. What? Oh, no! Why do I always right-click? I don't know. Ah. I did it again. Um. Something about fashion. Okay. Absolutely as much culture as they can endure. Day 1868. Sex became passé the day they invented the assembly line. I'm not sure I'm following this prime paragon fellow. I think he might be insane. Day 1869. The following is a pronouncement from the Mondite prime paragon. It is said that one must continuously examine one's own life. But the Prime Paragon has found that this is not necessarily the case. Long ago, the Prime Paragon stopped examining his life, and he began having others do it for him. This saved him a great deal of time, and it's been extremely liberating for him. <laughs> the fuck? So yes, let's all just get other people to examine our lives for us. Day 1870. The reticulum is a failed system because it is primarily interested in profit and is oblivious to the ultimate measurement of success, the eternal climb of evolution. Their petty obsessions hold them back, while the rest of us continue to grow beyond them. One day soon they will be obsolete. 
day 1871. Recently, I've spent a lot of time examining spiders, and I've become quite fascinated with them. Spiders came to me in a vis vision. <laughs> When I looked at them, I saw people wearing shirts that have two extra arms and pants that have two extra legs. But why stop there? With cybernetic attachments, people can have four arms and four legs. It would be very convenient once one got over the confusion of learning how to use them properly. I see houses that have no stairs or ceilings or floors, only nets that people can crawl along on. Food and possessions are hung from the nets attached to them with adhesive. For furniture, I see semispheres, semispheres, for chairs and fibrous hammocks that you can wrap yourself up in for bedding. What sort of freaking future does this guy want? I don't... That's a very bizarre goal for humanity. Day 1872. For a long, long time, evolution was a force in the universe that pointed the way as lowly life forms stumbled blindly towards it, not even particularly aware of it or where they were headed. Look how far life in this universe has come since then. Now we not only have a certain extent of control over how fast we go, but we can decide where we are going as far as evolution is concerned. We must decide, for for in fact, if we fail to choose a destination at this point, we will only stumble back to that dim place from whence we came. Day 1873. Flesh is the source of all corruption. Look at how much misery is brought into the world due to its limitations. Flesh is corrupt because it can die. The only possible resolution for flesh is death. To advance beyond where we have come, we must reject the flesh. We must choose an alternative. The flesh must be transcended. Day 1874. Style, it has been said, is the struggle of form versus function. Machinists only follow function. Form, they say, follows function. As if one were to control function, they would automatically be the master of form. This is only a limitation in their thinking. One must achieve total control over both form and function, specifically in order to create anything of real worth or meaning. This is truly style. Day 1875. I no longer eat anything that has been organically grown. Day 1876. One must begin by doubting every statement. One must find a way of subjecting every statement to the test of experiment. One must continuously determine whether or not a statement or action serves the advancement of human evolution. We must do these things because we are evolutionary harbingers. Jeez. Day 1877. We live in a society that has unnaturally prejudiced aesthetics. That doesn't look spelled right to me, but maybe it is. In art, living things are almost always the preferred subject of choice. What if machines and artificial creations, to create a portrait of an engine or to engineer the pathways of an algorithm would be seen as something highly original or deliberately unusual? But it's not. The assertion, that me the assertion merely displays a set of standards that are out of balance. Day 1878. Just yesterday, I was watching some video feed on my monitor, dis monitor display that showed a group of... Uh... Catecholamine miners at work. I noticed that the special protective clothing that they wear or I noticed the special protective clothing that they wear, and I thought how interesting the world would be if everyone were to dress like catecholamine miners. So, we all should be spiders, except with four legs and four arms. And we should all also be spiders dressed as miners. And we should not have sex, we should just make assembly lines. 
Um, that is this, this guy's vision of human evolution. Day 1879. I make this following request to anyone who has read or heard my words. If you should ever encounter me in person, I sincerely ask that you kill me. I now thank you in advance. This is a trick, you say? Very well, I shall explain it to you. If you are ever successful in killing me, then you shall discover that who you have killed was never really me at all. Should you ever try to actually kill that person who is really me, the person whose words you are reading right now, you will discover that he is unkillable. Of course, I must inform you that death is the penalty for actually attempting to kill me and failing. Day 1880. The reticulum reveals itself to be de-evolutionary when it attempts to restrict the culture of the Mondites. The reticulum pretends that it favors all cultures equally, but it denies the natural superiority of Mondite culture therefore defiling all cultures that would benefit through the emulation of Mondite culture, or the absorbing into Mondite culture. The reticulum is anti-culture, and celebrates the total absence of culture. Uh, but again, culture, according to the Mondite Prime Paragon, is just... fashion? And we need to make fashion really fast. Day 1881. A dedicated follower of fashion is the only sort of individual that is truly socially aware. We're all going to be extremely fashionable spiders dressed as miners. Day 1882. The ultimate purpose to which nanotechnology can be applied is the continuous reconstruction of our bodies and surrounding environment. That way we can live in a space that is perpetually being redefined moment by moment as rapidly as the shifts in our mood or focus of concentration. Every thought and every emotion can exist in its own unique physical environment. Our bodies themselves will become the exterior manifestations of our inner selves. Uh, so we'll be spiders living in webs and fashionable minor suits who are also living in limbo where everything is constantly changing and shifting. Um, what a hell world. Day 1883. Life would be much less complicated if all food was one same unique color. Would it? Let's say every food item was blue. The same exact shade of blue. Would that make anyone's life less complicated? Or are there people who spend a lot of time looking at things and trying to determine if it's food or not? Day 1884. For a long time, I have noticed how much better people tend to relate to computers than they do with other individuals. All of the people who I have ever met that have lost limbs or had limbs replaced with cybernetics are more satisfied with their replacements than they were with their original bodies. The human animal is naturally a symbiote living in harmony with the machines it creates. The closer the unity between these two things, the more improved the existence of both. Day 1885. Computers communicate with each other in a more efficient manner than human beings do. People communicate to a certain point, and past that invent elaborate mechanisms that allow them to to safely exist despite not communicating with each other. If I instructed you to forget something, you would probably not be able to do it, would you? Day 1886. The highest form of philosophy is mathematics. Day 1887. In the past, the history of all cultures could be found in its mythology. In the future, the history of all Mondite culture will be implanted through nanite genetic encoding. Day 1888. In four days, it is extremely likely that I will have some important news to tell you. Day 1889. Something that I very much enjoy is the clothing, architecture, poetry, literature, and music of the second Marathian era 
as it was represented on the southern hemisphere of Australia. Day 1890. As of this writing, 5,813 Mondites have been arrested and charged with my phone is ringing, but I don't know where it is. So I will not heed its call. Oh, there it is. Or maybe I will. Hello? Spam. Uh, where am I? As of this writing, 5,813 Mondites have been arrested and charged with criminal activity throughout the reticulum. 975 of them were convicted. This is a percentage of 16%. As of this writing, throughout history, 100 members of the Parliament of the Reticulum were at one time or another formally charged with illegal activities. All 100 eventually stepped down, and 93 of them were found guilty in a court of law. This is a percentage of 93%. Day 1891. In attempting anyone, worth. In attempting anything, one must always remember to perform three basic actions. Prepare oneself to receive transmission. Establish the connection to one's power source and transcend conventional reality. In tempting anything, one must always do those things. Receive transmission. Connection to power source established. Transcending reality. That's how you do anything. Day 1892. I have recently created a new and highly advanced form of communication. I would like to say more about it, but I cannot. Day 1893. How dangerous that we place so much emphasis on body language and facial expression, and that we depend on it to such an extent to convey so much information. It is a carryover from basic animal behavior, and it is highly inefficient. Day 1894. Fashion is fascism in its ultimate and most benevolent form. Don't the followers of fashion feel superior to those who are not? Don't the followers of fashion exclude those with inferior fashion sense from their social order? Don't the followers of fashion place the mark of shame upon those, all those who are not, or place the mark of shame upon those all, those all who are not? Okay. Merely by wearing their uniforms, making both groups easily recognizable. Isn't the ultimate goal of the followers of fashion to obliterate the culture of all those who are not and replace it with their own? Uh, so fashion is Nazism. There we go. We're going to round up anyone who is not fashionable and put them in concentration camps next, so. Or maybe we'll trap them in our spider webs. Oh, this is the end of the log. Fashion is the most immediate and ultimately the most powerful force of social evolution. It must be openly embraced for social evolution to prosper. Day 1895. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Wise words. Give it up for the Mondite Prime Paragon. Okay, more reactor alerts. That's great. Uh, okay. More extremely <laughs> lengthy logs to read. This is uh, the best part of the game. File appropriated from E. Escher. Personal journal by A. Mastaba, dated 
1895. The following are the notes of the continuing archaeological mission to the ruins of Daedalus, as written by Dr. Eden Escher, head, archaeo head archaeologist, Mount Sion Expedition. Day 1149. This moon, Daedalus, has never had a molten center, yet our geographic analysis shows massive geological instability enduring a thousand centuries. This is a disappointment. There is no telling what might have been left behind by the civilization that once lived here, and what has now been lost to us for all time. Day 1152. Analysis of the satellite data has revealed a massive underground construction. Two hollow rings beneath this moon's surface encircle the entire planet. One of them runs exactly north to south, and the other runs along the equator. Together they look like the rings of a gyroscope. The equatorial ring has been broken in so many places over a period of thousands of years that it has been virtually destroyed. No doubt it has fallen victim to the geological instability of this planet. The north-south ring is worn and strained in many places, yet mir miraculously is still intact. What an astounding achievement! It is truly a marvel of engineering. How tragic that it may be the only remaining legacy of a once great civilization. Day 1155. Great news! We have located structural remains with the potential to give us a meaningful look at those who once lived here. A cluster of ruins by an extinct volcano on Daedalus's northern pole. We named it Mount Sion in order of the world where the Mondite Prime Paragon was born. Day 1215. Life here on Daedalus is hard. The isolation from the rest of the universe isn't nearly so bad as being constantly in the company of Mondite zealots. I went Mondite for the first time back in my university days, mostly as a form of intellectual protest. I do not regret it. Within the rigid structure of the reticulum, any form of scientific pursuit is the manacled slave of bureaucracy and economics. Wait. So, is she a Mondite and pro-Mondite, which is what it sounds like, but also complaining that she doesn't like the company of Mondite zealots? Is she just like a normie Mondite and not a zealot Mondite? Is that the difference? I don't know. If not for the Mondites, I wouldn't have this incredible opportunity to actually hold in my hands the remains of a non-human civilization. I want to get started right this instant. Day 1354. The expedition has hardly begun, and I already feel I may have made a crucial error. After yesterday's officers meeting, I was pulled into a discussion with Commander Wilm concerning Mondite politics. Everyone here pays closer attention to it than I do, and I went ballistic. How do you have a reasonable discussion with a group of people who are in favor of the imprisonment and mutilation of all of those who disagree with them? I don't handle such, such situations well. They tell me I'm better at dealing with people after they've been dead a few thousand years or so. Day 1413. Commander Wilm was killed today in a construction accident. A large flooring section broke free of its support and fell on top of him. He died instantly. Day 1600. Now that the hardships of constructing the space are at last behind us, I can turn my full attention towards the thing which has brought us here. The day I saw the censored data of the Amb Ambassadoria, I knew that I would have to come here. I have been studying the satellite pictures of the Mount Sion crater for months, and I am puzzled. Why construct an entire underground city along the lip of a volcano, extinct or otherwise? Day 1632. The acidic lake within the crater continues to confound our exploration. It has necessitated the construction of a crude catwalk to allow us access there. Previously, one had to scale the crater, march along the rim, and then rappel down to the other side. 
the latter method was proving to be too dangerous, as the winds along the top of the crater can become strong enough to blow a man over the edge. Um, now right here, where they say repel down, I don't think that's the right repel, is that... That's like repel, like, push away, not like... I don't know. Day 1654. We have encountered an unexpected peril. A large, carnivorous creature that lives in the acid lake. The thing visits us on a fairly regular basis. It is attracted to our bright work lights. Whenever it appears, everyone runs for cover and the lights are extinguished. After an hour or so, we are finally able to drive it off with small arms fire. None of our weaponry is capable of seriously harming it. Every other day or so, it reappears and the procedure repeats. We will have to be constantly on the watch for this thing. It could devour a man in seconds. Day 1687. The past 30 days have been a constant... I've never heard this word actually pronounced. Vacillation is how I will pronounce it. Between hope and discouragement. We have been finding many tiny, unidentifiable artifacts. Seemingly... Seemingly decayed machine parts. Today we had our first major success. We uncovered a sealed chamber in immaculate condition, which may be the key to the entire complex. For lack of a better phrase, we have called it the temple. There is an immense boss re ba relief. Again, I, this isn't a word that I actually pronounce much. Base relief? I don't know. In the center of it. I believe it guards, or more accurately conceals, an entrance that will grant us access into the heart of the complex. There is a vast amount of writing on the walls of this chamber. That alone should prove to be a find of incalculable value. Day 1688. Today we begin maneuvering our heavy equipment into the new chamber. If my suspicions are correct, it will be well worth the trouble. Day 1697. So far, the statue seems to be getting the better of us. Attempts to move it have completely burned out the motor of our portable winch. Day 1703. Today we tried to dislodge the statue with the smaller mechanized digging tools. It did not even budge. Day 1710. After a week of attempting to dislodge the statue from the floor, we have switched tactics and tried burrowing a small tunnel underneath it. Both efforts failed, and I'm calling off further attempts to get around the statue for now. There's too much artwork and script engraved into the walls to afford damaging the place in our futile attempts. Analysis of the stone density show that we should be able to move it. There's some unknown force protecting this room from our invasion. I have no idea what it could be. Day 1713. Mastaba is not happy with the progress we have been making. I promised him that the team would redouble its efforts until we had discovered a way into the ruins. Day 17... Well, day 1715. Still no progress. Mastaba made some veiled threats about taking over the project personally. If that happens, he will simply begin strip mining this place. I can't let this valuable find come to that. I must do something. Day 1717. I looked over the satellite analysis and I have isolated a soft spot inside the crater. We'll attempt to drill our own entrance into the ruins complex from there. This will no doubt cause some damage to the site, but there just doesn't seem to be any other way in. This goes against everything I was trained to do. I know that historians of the future will no doubt see this as a terrible misstep, and one that led to the loss of untold knowledge. I hope that it is also remembered that I was never given a choice. Day 1720. The deed is done. Several artifacts and some wall engravings were destroyed. They tell me that it could have been worse. I know that if I had been relieved of my duties, my replacement would have not been nearly as careful as I was. 
Still, what I have done is a crime. For the first time, I feel as if I am no longer a scientist, merely a looter. Day 1724. We have completed construction of our entrance tunnel. I am having an airlock installed there. If possible, we will seal and repressurize portions of the complex area, filling it with our own atmosphere, which is less corrosive than that of Daedalus. Day 1033. 1733. Disaster. As we attempted to dig our way into the complex, the roof of the chamber collapsed. The first room has been completely filled with rock and dirt. Three of our diggers were killed. Day 1734. We have begun digging out the debris from the chamber. Our plan is to hollow it out and resupport the ceiling. Perhaps something can be saved after all. Day 1764. The new ceiling supports to the first dig chamber have been installed. Now we can safely clear out the rest of the debris. Day 1795. The preliminary computer analysis of the alien language is complete. So far, it has registered more than three quarters of a million alphabetic characters. It is conceivable that translations of this writing could be decades away. Day 1824. The first chamber is clear. Only a few artifacts were found here. None were recovered since the accident. We have begun the process of replacing the atmosphere with our own. There is a corridor leading off from this chamber that must be regularly cleared of a particularly nasty variety of indigenous life form, vicious creatures that are somehow lighter than air. Beyond it lies a massive tomb. There is also one other passageway leading out from our chamber which so far has proved impassable. Day 1845, a linguistic breakthrough. Initial character patterns from the computer analysis indicated that there could be writing in more than one language inside the temple. Now, pattern categorization and mathematical analysis has backed up this idea. One of these languages has a remarkable statistical consistency, and the other is composed of nothing but component replication configurations. There is something else in the temple area. It must have originally had extraordinary significance. A series of rings that form an, elaborate, an elaborately complex but clearly distinct pattern is placed in the center of the room and given such a profound display that I wonder if it might have some religious significance. I think my phone is almost out of battery. I forgot it was running quite low on batteries before. Tell me phone, you are on 2%. I must go plug in my phone. I will return. back. Sorry about that. Let's see. Day 1854. I have turned my full attentions towards the linguistic work. Just the writing on the walls of the temple will provide me with enough to chew on for years. Day 1869. Zane, our engineer, has asked to study one of the artifacts recovered in the first dig chamber. He went on and on about the artifact's chemomagnetic and electrogravitational properties, and his theory that it was some sort of battery. Against my better judgment, I gave it to him and told him to report back frequently. Day 1873. That idiot Zane took the artifact and turned it into some sort of a toy. I must be a bigger idiot because I am the one who gave it to him. He 
he has created a small flying craft using the artifact as a power source to store gravitic energy. Don't they see the value of this race, this culture? They've left so little behind for us to study. Bastardizing the lost remains of their civilization is wrong. What is worse, either no one agrees with me about this, or no one is brave enough to say so openly. I asked Dr. Mustaba to give me the authority to repossess the battery, but he brushed me off in a manner that I found most humiliating. Day 1876. Inspired by the progress of Dr. Zane, Mastaba now also wants to use the alien technology in, con in connection with his ABA project, whatever that is. Based upon my preliminary examinations of skeletal remains, it is my belief that this race once possessed materials and techniques for cybernetics far in advance of anything available to us. Mastaba also appropriated a metallic cylinder that we had found in the dig site. I did not have very long to examine it, but I believe it could have been a powerful weapon of some sort. He told me in no uncertain terms that I was no longer allowed access to the items and he and Zane have to the items he and Zane have claimed from the site. When I protested, he claimed the situation was merely temporary. I know him too well now to actually believe him, but I do not have the authority to deny him anything. I'm afraid I have made a critical mistake. I thought it would advance the project to bring in someone of Zane's caliber to help study the artifacts. Day 1887. In the tomb, there is a sarcophagus which contains an alien that is now registering very faint life signs. We mustn't we mustn't let what happened to the Ambassadoria happen to us. I have informed Mastaba, and he has ordered that this coffin be moved to the security level and placed under 24-hour-a-day guard. Day 1891. For the first time since Mastaba's arrival, I have seen just what his ABA project is. There is a man in Cell 1 who has been turned into some sort of animal. There is a man in cell 3 who has had virtually his entire body replaced by machinery. That's me. I am ashamed to think that somehow I have contributed to these heinous acts. Work from my team's project has been borrowed for this. What can I do? The, the rape of the archaeological site and theft of the artifacts are now merely minor offenses to which I have become accomplice. Day 1892. I have attempted to communicate with whoever is occupying cell 3. He has been mechanized and mutilated beyond all recognition. Still, there is something about him which seems familiar, or perhaps I am only sympathizing with his plight. We are both prisoners enslaved by a morally blank ideology, which has distorted us into monstrous virgins, versions of our former selves. If I could do s Yeah, hush. <laughs> Versions. If I could do something to help him, I would. But there is talk that there have already been two others imprisoned, or worse, for resisting Mastaba's plans. I must watch myself, or I have not been quiet in my... Oh, for I have not been quiet in my objections. If he perceives anyone as a potential enemy in this entire base, then it is certainly me. Day 1894. There is nothing else for me to do. I am throwing myself into my work. I have made significant progress on translating some of this language. I have learned enough to know the real true name of this... Uh, of this race. They are the Fix. Once I finish the reprogramming my once I finish reprogramming my linguistic computer, I'll let the software take a crack at it. I'm worried about what Mastaba will do. Awesome. The fix. So we have fixed technology maybe in us. What is this? Satellite view. So we're at Daedalus space, right? And there's a passage somewhere that leads to part of the acid lake? 
and there's a bridge. But the bridge will probably be destroyed, and we will have to climb down, skirt the rim, and then repel up again, like that log said, to get to the excavation of the site. It's very, very long. Let's do it. <sighs> mission calendar. The following dates are recorded according to the Daedalus mission calendar. Entries are posted by Commander Wilm. Day zero, the Ambassadoria encounters an alien spacecraft. Excerpts from the ship's log of the Ambassadoria. This is Captain Strom of the Ambassadoria. We are 21 days out of Australia en route to New Freedom's port. Today, while scanning some debris, we came across something with a sensor signature very much like a spacecraft. It had no identification beacon, and there are no records of any ships lost in this area. It resembles nothing that can be found in the spotter's guide, but our computer insists that it is a ship. We are changing course to investigate. Next entry. At first, we thought that this ship was nothing but a meteorite because its surface has become coated with so much dust and debris. This is definitely the remains of a ship, but unlike anything we or anyone has ever seen. It seemingly has no propulsion system, or perhaps it is a propulsion system unlike anything we have. I can only assume that this craft has been produced by an advanced civilization that has never before been encountered. I have assembled a boarding party, and we are going aboard. Next entry. This ship is an ancient tomb in space for eight non-human passengers who have been out here for an estimated 100,000 years. A preliminary analysis seems to indicate that the craft itself is powered by some manner of gravitic drive. It's completely unlike any technology possessed by the Reticulum. On request from my medical officer, we are taking a dead alien specimen aboard for examination. That is their first mistake. They're going to get face huggered. Next log. This alien creature looks like a big marble statue. Our medical officer has removed it from its coffin. Remarkably, it is exhibiting signs of life. Huh. So inside the coffin or sarcophagus or whatever, the alien creature looks like a big marble statue. It's not the sarcophagus itself that does. The creature does. Yes, I want that sarcophagus. Next entry. Many of the crew are dead. This thing tears its way through the structure of the ship the way a mole digs through dirt. Nothing can stop it. Already, most of the Prime systems have been knocked out. So far, everyone who has encountered this thing has been murdered by it. The ship is inoperative and immobile. We have sent a distress signal, but I know that even if it is heard, help cannot reach us in time. The others all realize it, but we don't dare to say it out loud. The truth is that we're all dead men. Next entry. Only a handful of us left. There is no other option but to take to the lifeboat and destroy the ship. Next entry. The lifeboat has been sabotaged. I'm the last one left alive. When I finish this, I will jettison the black box and then do what must be done. Every last member of my crew behaved heroically in the face of this danger and conducted themselves befitting the highest commendations of the reticulum. Let it be known that I accept the sole responsibility for this terrible disaster. This is Captain Strom of the Ambassadora signing off for the final time. Self-destruct mechanism activated. Both ships destroyed. Day 42. 
Mondite ships intercept the Ambassadoria distress signal. As they approach the signal's point of origin, the signal's jammed and distorted, ensuring that it will be heard by no one else. Day 44. The destroyed hulk of the Ambassadoria and the fixed spacecraft are discovered. Day 45, 351. The spacecraft, alien specimen, and forensics are examined. Black box intercepted. Day 352, 895. The calculations of location of fixed homeworld and astronomical corroboration are established. Day 896, the Prime Paragon orders a covert expedition to the alien homeworld. He christens it Daedalus. Day 897, 1018. Mondites acquire and outfit a special mission, customized long-range jump freighter, the Kasenko. Day 1019, the Kasenko launches bound for Daedalus. Day 1143, Kasenko arrives in the Daedalus system, establishes orbit around Daedalus, and launches cartographic satellite. Day 1145, 1148. Cartographic satellite charts surface of Daedalus. The surface of the planet is barren, completely absent of any evidence of an alien civilization. Base team specialists awakened from cryosleep. Day 1149, 1155. Computer analysis of Daedalus surface charts. Numerous potential archaeological sites exist beneath the planet's surface. The most promising of these is named Mount Sion. First team prepares. Day 1156. Base camp established on the rim of the Mount Sion crater, the North Pole of Daedalus. Day 1157. 1177. Deployment of equipment and personnel. Establishment of preliminary shelters. Day 1178, the Kasenko successfully performs a calculated hard landing inside the Mount Sion crater. Day 1179, the superstructure of the Kasenko is dismantled so that the base can be constructed from its raw materials. Day 1269, ground is broken to establish the building of the formal base within the side of Mount Sion crater. Day 1270, preliminary excavation of the base interior is completed. Day 1360. Further construction is delayed when the level of the acid lake inside the crater inexplicably starts to rise. After cresting the lake levels, hold steady, although it has engulfed over 95% of the available landmass inside the crater. Day 1413. Commander Wilm, leader of the first team, dies in a construction accident. The following entries are posted by security officer Kanan, our buddy, uh, our blue buddy. Day 1414. Two. Oh, okay. Okay, so these uh, hyphenated dates are literally hyphenated dates, not like a date and then a time. I'm just... I didn't parse that right. Uh, so from day 1414 through 1540, miraculously, the construction of the base is completed, although it is more than 100 days behind the original mission schedule. Day 1541 through 1600, preliminary archaeological work begun. The mouth of the alien necropolis is discovered. This work is supervised by the leader of the second team, Dr. Escher. Day 1616. The support ship Viseria arrives in the Daedalus system. It brings new equipment and supplies, two marine dropships to provide security, and the new base commander, Dr. Amit Mustaba. Day 1631. Dr. Mustaba begins conducting research for the ABA project. Day 1687, a large statue is discovered blocking the passageway inside the mouth of the alien necropolis. Day 1688 through 1702, numerous attempts are made to move or bypass the statue. All fail. Day 1703 through 1733, a separate entrance is drilled into the alien necropolis. Day 1734 through 1824, 
the first interior chamber of the alien necropolis is excavated. Day 1825 through 1886. Analysis of the initial ABA test subjects begins. Day 1887. An alien specimen that shows signs of life is transferred from the dig site to the cell block of the security level in the base. All further entry is posted by Technical Officer Amdant. Day 1893. First successful ABA project prototype created. Security Officer Kanan and Prisoner Dane captured in an attempt to hijack a dropship from the landing platform. Day 1825 through 1886. Analysis of the initial ABA test subjects begins. Oh, oh, okay. This is the end of the log. Uh, the very last log is day 1895. Alien specimen escapes from cell block. Class 3 reactor alert declared. Base evacuated. Okay, that is every freaking log, terminal, whatever. I'm getting out of here. Let's go be stompy boys. It looks like I'm wearing, like, Fallout Power Armor. Really pixelated Fallout Power Armor. Oh. Uh, so I'm still left with a choice. And there, there's a guy with a gun. A logbook. Oh. Okay, it looks like I have another logbook to read. Thankfully, very short. A security breach of the airlock has occurred. To re-establish base integrity, the airlock has been resealed. The new locking pattern is in positive O-ring configuration. The grid is in XY emulation mode. Uh, okay, this was a pointless logbook. Well, that's fun. Uh, so yeah, there's a guy with a gun in the hallway, ready to kill us. And there's a guy with a battery or a flashlight or something down in the hangar bay. Yeah, while we read through all of these, Zane's research. Let's save. Maybe our journal can actually give us a hint. The Mondites follow this guy? He is a complete lunatic. No wonder everything around here is so crazy. Yep, Prime Paragon. He's a loony. Let's just save over our existing save. So we have this fun robot, buddy. Can we drive him into the hallway? Maybe he can kill that guy with the blaster. I think we can. Maybe we can deflect blaster bolts with this suit, I don't know. Not one of Moscow's brighter creations, are you? Am 
must tell Dr. Mustaba. This one needs work. Oh, thanks, dude. So great. Not one of Mustafa's brightest creations, are you? I think we'll be fine if he doesn't shoot me. I just need to. Have you lost your mind? Oh my god. Attacking a fellow member of the expedition? What? A fellow no. member of the expedition? I'm, am I a member? Dr. Mustaba. This one needs work. I don't understand. Am I a member of the expedition? Maybe I volunteered to be transformed. I don't know. Maybe I was a true Mondite believer. Not one of Mustafa's brighter creators. Why don't his blaster bolts bounce off the uh, walls? I must tell Dr. Mustafa. This one needs work. Maybe we just run by him. Not one of Mustafa's brighter creations, are you? Later, dude. combat mode. Maybe we just need to get real up close and personal with this dude. Let me figure out how to punch again. That's kicks. Not one of the battle brighter creations, are you? I'm trying to kick you. You lost your mind. When, why isn't it kicking? I must tell Dr. Mustaba. This one needs work. Well, this is going to be quite a slog. Not that kick. Do this kick. Not one of Mustafa's brighter creations, are you? You lost your mind? No, kick him, please. Please kick him. Attacking a fellow member of the expedition? I must tell Dr. Masaba. This one needs work. What do I do about that? I'm really bad at fighting. I wish I went easy mode. I think if I can just get like the first hit in, that'll be. Good to go. Let's let's try headbutting him. Mm. 
Why isn't this opening? Not one of Gustavo's brighter creations. Are you out of your mind? Oh my god. Really? I can't get like a single hit in. I must tell Dr. Gustavo. This one needs work. Expedition? Mm, I must tell Dr. Mustafa. This one needs work. I'm gonna have to look up like a locker or something. Buddy, please, you have to be able to do something. I just can't get close enough. What's the quickest attack that we have? That's pretty quick. So if I run to up to him and then... Sure. Not one of the most brighter creations, are you? Lost your mind? Attacking a fellow member of the expedition? Oh my god. I must tell Dr. Mustaba. This one needs work. Let's see. Um. 
they shoot right through it. I don't... Let's see if he really is. How am I doing? You lost your mind? <laughs> yes, because I'm not in combat mode. Help me, robot. Not like that. <laughs> I must tell Dr. Mustafa. This one needs work. What if I put in automatic mode? anything in automatic mode. No. Try and kill this guy without losing so much health, maybe. How's my battery at? So this is a fully charged battery. Why the heck am I using it? Back up. Put down the fully charged battery. Let's use up this battery. Save over combat time. Sure. You shot down the reinforcements. Oh, he's holding they were that our lock, only but... chance. deserve to die after what you did to me. You... you murdered all of us. I need to heal myself. Please don't walk into the screen. Okay, this battery is useless now. Or almost useless at the very least. So let's see, what was the quickest punch? That one. We screwed up. I may be dead anyway, but at least I get to send you first. Okay. Let's get good at combat. Combat mode. Punch, punch, quick punch. Nope. We screwed up already. What? Oh, so I don't even have to activate that, just as automatic. Is this any sort of armor? I sure hope so. We shot down the reinforcements. They were our only chance. It's not quite at the right angle, and it's so hard to tell with you, the graphics. You murdered all of us. Oh, I'm dead. Ah, 
really close. You people deserve to die after what you did to me. I'll take care of the reactor, but first, I'm going to take care of you. No, 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 he shifted. Run. How do we do that move again? Yeah, that one. The Kirk double fist. Okay, that seemed effective. Can I heal anymore? No. Get old battery. A battery? Drop old battery. Faster move. I may be dead anyway. We have to but alternate, at least I, get I guess. To send you first. Okay. We're learning combat. You shot down the reinforcements. Oh, I was in they combat. were our only chance. after what you did to me. I may be dead anyway, but at least I get to send you first. Yep. Combat mode. You shot down the reinforcements. They were our only chance. You people deserve to die after what you did to me. Please die. You. I need to run. You murdered all of us. We did a decent amount of damage to him. We have a little bit left on this battery. Okay. Nope, nope, please run. That's not running. Okay. Take that. I'll take care of the reactor, but first, I'm going to take care of you. Why, why are you not attacking, buddy? Nope. That's not good. We're dead. We're dead. I what may be dead anyway. It just stopped responding to, to like, my input. First. So kicks better than punches. People deserve to die after what you did to me. You shot down the reinforcements. They were our only chance. Can we 
exploit this in some way. That's a very weird dance we're doing. Take care of the reactor, but first I'm going to take care of you. Nope. Back up slightly. Come on, can we exploit it? This is so cheap. Come on. It's gotta work. No, don't move away. People deserve to die after what you did to me. I don't think this will help us at all though, fighting the next dude. is not quite in the right pixel position. Okay, it seems like there's a little bit of a combo thing going on. So if I do this bigger... Okay. So if I switch between them, it's way faster than following up with the same one you just did. We're learning. actually going to have to fight him. How do we sidestep? Take care of the reactor, but first, I'm going to take care of you. All 
I have no idea what's happening right now. a very exciting, strange fight. The people deserve to die after what you did to me. I found a weird exploit where he can't really do much to hit me when I'm standing right here. And every once in a while, I can punch him. So I've just been having a very, very slow uh, punch out fight. I also figured out how to I actually fight in this. First, I'm going to take care of you. If you do the same move twice, then you do it in like super slow motion. And so I, I had really been screwing, screwing mm. up before. At least when the reactor blows, my death will be quick and painless. I am glad that I could add some small amount of suffering to yours. Okay, dude. Get his log up. Oh, let's heal up first. Cool. Now we'll throw away this battery. A log book. Yeah, I've been trying to get some combat practice. A battery. This battery is trash. Goodbye, battery. We can put on a weird suit. It seems to prevent us from instantly dying when we go into the reactor. Let's look at all these again. fight the guy with the blaster out there now. Oh yeah, we have a little robot forklift friend. Which, I guess we can go ahead and move him into position. Uh, let's read all of this though, so we can fill out our journal. I already read this earlier, so I'm not actually reading it again. But that sound that it just made means that it just added something to our journal, so it's a good thing. Uh, this guy, the Mondite Prime Paragon, he's like their spiritual leader. He wants everyone to be multi-limbed cybernetic spiders that are also fashion fascists and wear catecholamine mining uniforms <laughs> and live in uh, webs that are ever changing and shifting with our moods where we hang all of our belongings from the webs like spiders um, he's a pretty crazy dude I think we were pretty much caught up. I'm going to save again. Because I think we did a better job there than the last time. So 
so I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna just make sure to do combo or just switch between two different ones. I guess that's not really much of a combo. If you're going to the reactor room, watch out for the security bot. Its enemy identification circuitry has been damaged. Oh. He was attacking me last time. Is that because I moved the robot in here first? And this time I just came in? Well, that's super convenient. Have you lost your mind? Let's just kick, uh, kick the crap out of him. I'm kickboxing champ. How much health does he have? Jeez. No. No, he's going to kill us. You lost your mind. Jeez. He's really hard to kill. We need to kick him into a wall next time so he can't recover. Can we do this? Is it really this easy as just hitting these two buttons? Uh, you, you, uh, did you not see me get in the suit? It's a suit. Oh no, no, no he's gonna kick me. Oh, okay, whew. A radiation suit. But it looks a bit like Fallout Power Armor, so I don't know. I don't think it actually gives me any armor. I seem to die just as quickly wearing it versus mm. not. I must tell Dr. Mustaba. This one needs work. Uh, so I thought we were doing so well there. I don't, uh, he still killed us though. I guess if he's non-hostile, I could just walk away from him. But I kind of want his blaster. If you're going to the reactor room, watch out for the security bot. Its enemy identification circuitry has been damaged. Let's get in position. I you guess we Mondays aren't one big happy family after all. I hope Mustaba rewards your loyalty by making you his next test subject. You lost your mind? Oh my god. So kicks seemed much more effective than punching. I must tell Dr. Mustaba, this one needs work. If I want a gun... I just said that I don't have to. I just said that like a moment ago. If you're going to the reactor room, watch out for the security bot. Its enemy identification circuitry has been damaged. To kill him. Because he is a hostile enemy. You lost your mind? And he has a gun and I want it. Yes, he is hostile. He just doesn't know I'm me because I'm wearing the armor. Yes, very hostile. He, he's killed me over and over by shooting me with that blaster. I 
guess we Mondites aren't one big happy family after all. I don't think we took any I guess damage. It can be hard sometimes to tell who your friends are. Give me that blaster. A blaster. Nice. This one doesn't seem to bounce off walls though, which is sad. But we have a gun now, so now when we go downstairs, we can actually fight that dude who has the uh, flashlight or other battery or whatever. I think I should save again. Okay. It's go time, little forklift. I lift his body? Nope. Why do I have so much trouble pressing this one button, the up button? There we go. Without doing this, it just killed me in one shot. Now let's see if I can go in there. the reactor code. Hopefully I can stop the Warning. meltdown. Time until reactor critical indeterminate. What is that on the other side? Is that the alien that woke up? It's like another cybernetic thing. Can I shoot it from here? I can. Also feels pretty exploitative, but let's go ahead. Maybe I can't kill it. If this is the alien creature thing, then it, it is pretty much immune to attacks like that. A little bit annoying.
Apparently that's a term that you aren't supposed to use. I had to manually allow it. A blast. Oh no! I know what to do now. I think I know what to do now. So let's go annoy this guy, get him to run all the way across the bridge, and we run back, do the pylons, enter the code. I did it. 
frog. Immediate critical situation nullified. Sweet. Oh, I got a journal entry. Whew. My actions in the reactor room were only a delaying tactic. This place is going up low, and I need to be as far away from here as possible when it happens. Indeed, frog is pog. No, I didn't save. What the hell? I need to do that to him, don't I? It's a good thing I didn't save. That's why he starts running when you start getting close to the end. Alright. Maybe I can do one of the pylons before luring, luring him across. Turn off the situation. Oh, I'm dead. Hmm. Well. Wow. 
to hurry now. making good time, but I have no idea. Okay. Whew. Now, old frog. Immediate critical situation nullified. I'm going to go across and then save. Holy cow. Well, at least I don't have to worry about blowing up. Immediately, at least. Warning. Temperature of plasma field still increasing. Time until the active determinant. Now we can go downstairs and beat up that other guy. Or shoot him. Not beat him up. I don't think that killed that creature though, that fall. Did that work? I don't think it did. Yeah, save over. Reactor side. Hanger to Dr. Mastella. I've spotted the assassin. The assassin is now in the hangar area. Impossible. Impossible. Not how much sense to supply every synapse in his brain. Guard the address and try to with your life. I will return shortly. Yeah, take that, buddy. It takes like three shots to kill me. I don't know why it takes so many to kill them. I swear that when my time comes, I will not die a pup like yourself. Good. Good to know. So what were you holding, buddy? A damaged walkie-talkie. A walkie-talkie. Let's see, there was some weird alien thing that we picked up, right? Somebody please help me. An alien artifact. I'm trapped in the dig site. Is this Dr. Escher? A damaged walkie-talkie. Please, don't leave me here to die. Okay, uh, that must be Dr. Eden Escher. I uh, guess before we try flying this thing, we should save again. What's with the music sting? It's almost full, though. Oh, okay. It's just, I guess, the battery for the ship. A battery. Oh, no, I can put it in. This is a really big battery, but I think it only has like 
100 charge, essentially. So it's not actually better than our current battery. Unless we can figure out a way to charge batteries. Okay, let's, uh... Can we put our old battery into the ship? The blaster! Alright, we'll just remember that that battery is there. And yeah, maybe I can't get into the ship. Just come down here for this walkie talkie. Maybe we can handle a different floor now. literally going to name it the same thing as that. So I'll call it Elevate Bath. Okay, we'll go back to this floor. Secure all scions. Energy discharges in this chamber are extremely hazardous. This has to be the way that we go, though. I just don't know how to... How do I beat it? Remember how to sidestep. What? I haven't gotten that death. Jeez. Okay, so maybe I can't fight it. Am I supposed to run by it? Do I need to go back up to the previous floor? 
is there some way to maybe take off from Icarus? I don't know. Let's just see if there's anything else to do over here. Please secure all sidearms. Energy discharges in this chamber are extremely hazardous. It's really slow, but that's how. Please secure all sidearms. Energy discharges in this chamber are extremely hazardous. I'm extremely hazardous. arm anymore. I can't go back that way. Okay. You are too valuable to die here. You are everything we might like to dream of becoming. The hope for the future. Am I your god because I created you? Or are you my god? For you are the attainment of everything I believe in. I promise you this. We shall find out. So this has to be where I go. Please secure all sidearms. Energy discharges in this chamber are extremely hazardous. We should save right here. Um, death Hall. We're just gonna try running past it, I think. Literally the only thing I can think of to do. isn't where I'm supposed to go. What am I not seeing in this hallway? 
Can I interact with these symbols on the sides of the hallway, maybe? reason I couldn't sidestep anymore. And it's really slow, I'm not sure we'll be able to dodge anything, but let's try it one more time. supposed to use. Yeah, let's go back and look at the Icarus part. Please secure all sidearms. Energy discharges in this chamber are extremely hazardous. All four of these are the same. I need to change out of that. Trying to activate every single like angle of it. This isn't as stupid as I can just open this, is it? No. This looks like there's something on the level below that's gripping the ship. So I need to get past that hallway. I think, so I can disengage that, and then come up here and take the Icarus. Oh 
win today. Is this a terminal? No. Kill me without that suit. Let me back out. Damn it. <sighs> so there has to be something that I do, but I don't know what. Let's see if I can get a, a little hint. There we go, military bot on floor four. This one is super deadly. In fact, it can kill you in only one shot. So do not get in its way when he shoots. So basically, it's just get good. Great. This will be real fun. I think I can dodge all the shots. I was expecting there to be some sort of a trick to this. Can I sprint sidestep? I didn't even check. That would make it way easier. Uh, the answer is no, not really. Prisoner. Sometimes the sidestep just doesn't seem to activate. Maybe I should save like right after this little mini cutscene that we don't have to watch it every time. But what a horrible place to save at the same time. Stay temporarily disabled. Please try again later. Stay temporarily disabled. Please try again later. Stay temporarily disabled. Please try again later. Yeah, let's save over it. This sucks. Accurate. So 
shot him once. How many shots does it take? The same as the uh, one up top. Risky business. No! <sighs> there isn't room to dodge in this tiny hallway. What the heck am I supposed to do, man? Man. Looks like he has uh, maybe like a weak point on his backside, but I don't think I can get around him in time to take advantage of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me load. Shoot him in those little gaps. Fault prisoner. The turning radius and like tank controls just oh, make this horrible. That was one sorry excuse for a security robot. Makes a great bonfire, though. That was one sorry excuse for a security robot. Only killed me many times. Holy cow. Uh, I guess we should save, right? Can we boot it? Nope. A blaster. Try and figure this out. So if I don't click one, what happens? It turns on. Do I want them all on, I'm assuming?
I don't know what I did, but all right. Button mashing. That's how you solve puzzles, right? I'm not big brand enough to do that. Save again. Doctor Escher did the one who trained you. She is insane. She tried to murder us all. If you see her, protect yourself. Kill her. So what is this? Okay, so we have some sort of tube we can go into. Okay, evil death robots. Whew. Can I make them shoot each other? Unlocked. Great. So let's go in that tube first. Tube? What's with this tube? than fighting them. Nope, don't fall into acid, buddy. Oh my god, really? Am I just supposed to be running the whole time? Just Is this a gauntlet? Okay, let's just run. No, we'll try and kill these. I can barely tell what's happening, because I'm like 5 pixels in size. Oh, I'm not dead? Oh, I am dead. Okay, gauntlet. Save Dr. Asher.
Dr. Escher is the one who trained you. She is insane. She tried to murder us all. What is this? <laughs> that woman, Escher, must be behind these doors somewhere. How do I get past them? Okay. The track movement are a bit slow to fire. I can outmaneuver them. Okay. like a dead end. The huge stone blocks must be part of... What was that? And these huge stone blocks must be part of the architecture of the ancient alien civilization. I have no way to jump. Can I get back up? No, I can't get back up. It's all downhill from here. Oh, goodbye, cruel world. Jeez, this is such a, such a hard game. <sighs> what should I do? healing device, that's useful. Cube of uncertain origin, composed of inert cesium and unidentifiable liquid alloy, inscribed with unusual characters. Mild radiation. Can I use it? Nope. That's a blaster. Let's 
try and figure it out. We can go down here. Oh, there are stepping stones uh, on this screen. We can just run off that platform. Let's try it. Could go somewhere. Fancy serpentines, let's just run. monsters like flute music. We'll try the flute, we'll try the meat. Let me back up so that I don't put my uh, blaster into, into the water. That. A blaster. Neat. A hunk of meat. Okay, no meat. is not saying anything. I didn't teleport though, I ziplined. Climb up them? <sighs> Come 
Come on, let me down. I'm trying to go down. Please fall. Thank you. Well, I see the missile. I'm assuming that's important. Sip cube. An alien artifact. things from Half-Life. Anybody need me? Help me, please! Somebody! How do I use the bomb? Let's not go that way. Um, hmm. Dr. Nessa is going to betray you. She is insane. She tried to murder us all. If you see her, protect her. Kill her. Holding 
and it does nothing. Oh, okay. Change the camera angle. That's it. Sure. Unknown. An alien artifact. The strange markings on the inside of this place could be pictures or writing, perhaps a mixture of both. I wish I could read them. This large sphere seems to be the centerpiece of this whole room. I wonder what, what it is. Why is it here? And what are the strange patterns around it? They look like a key of some kind. Okay. Let's put a work cube. Can we look at these patterns, please? this pointless. Please tell me this was not pointless. Do I need Escher first to translate these? Somehow get to that door and blow up the door that Escher's behind. Which means we might as well just load up that other save. Is this. Uh, this is loaded. Let's 
Pizza Cube. Let's not even go in that shit. Drop the gun to pick it up. Oh. Crap, I don't want to let go of my blaster. A blaster. Anywhere to like throw the bomb at it or anything though. An alien artifact. Let's see if maybe it looked like I did dodge like one paw grab of it, maybe. Maybe I can't go on that platform. You can see through its mouth out of its back. The, um, the polygons are, are not double-sided, I guess. guy on the ship. We'll need our blaster to do that. Dr. Esther is the one who betrayed you. She is insane. She tried to murder us all. If you see her, protect yourself. Who is this? Kill her. A medical device. Another medical device? Do I have two now? Is anybody there? Help me, please! Somebody! Yeah. Awesome. That was my health. Pretty good. We can kill this guy. Is that gonna come out now? Is it because we aren't holding the bomb? Oh, okay. You must be the escaped prisoner from the base. All I want is to survive. If we don't work together right now, we're both dead. My death means nothing. Let's see how you take to a stand-up fight. <laughs> 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 
It's not a stand-up fight at all, buddy. Sorry, man. I want his armor. What is this fight? Am I not supposed to have a blaster? really good armor. Ooh, how much shot? Exciting gameplay. Is he not killable, maybe? Do I just need to run? I don't get it. I'm so injured I can't even walk away. That was for my men, you grotesque son of a bitch. I'm assuming he's immune to blaster shots. I'm probably going to have to actually punch him hand to hand. Or maybe the bomb's for him? I somehow don't think so though. Maybe this strategy will work.
<laughs> no! Oh. Takes so many hits. It looks like I am doing damage though. But geez. Can I get this stuff? Your ships were coming to kill me. You gave me no choice. This is on medium difficulty. I don't understand. I shot down the ship earlier. I guess he was someone aboard. Like maybe he's the captain. I don't know. All I want is to survive. Yeah, I shot it down using like a big mounted gun. Your ships were coming to kill me. You gave me no choice. Stop fighting. We have to get off this planet now. All I want is to survive. We did it. I'm sure I'll be joining you and your men in hell very shortly. The reactor's still going critical. I can't stop it. Oh, I'm uh, very injured. Holy crap. A device with a button. We probably shouldn't press that just yet. What else does he have? A big gun. A big gun. Yeah, let's keep the big gun for sure. Let's save. Zip cube? Yeah, save over. A big gun? What did we write in our journal? This ship must be the wreckage of one of the two dropships I shot down. That woman trapped in the place they call the dig site may be the only ally I have on this world. I have to find her before Mastaba does. I feel under different circumstances, Tumult and I could have been comrades. I wonder how much Mastaba's soldiers really know about what he's doing. This marine weapon can be used as a gun or a club. Very handy. Why would I ever want to use it as a club? Sort of nonsense is that. Yeah, so let's press that button. Key device. Wow. 
Maybe I can use like the ship's weapons to attack that creature? Does anybody need me? Help me free! Yeah, heck yeah! Somebody! How do I do this though? I don't understand. How do I get him to be in the crosshair? Do I need to lure him closer? So does this damage the suit, like, permanent? Hopefully I don't need it again. Maybe I was supposed to change out of it. Let's see. Let's put the key device away. Let's save again. Does he ever get out of the water? <laughs> I screwed that up. Maybe if we run. Alien device ready. Let's try it again. A big ham. Indeed, chomp, chomp, chomp. I'm not a robot. No, you can't be partially a robot. You're either a robot or not. I'm a cyborg. I'm a cybernetic organism. starts going back this way, I can maybe use the alien device to cross over? No, you can't be partially a robot. Then you're, you're not a robot. 
A cyborg isn't part human, part robot. It's a human with mechanical parts. Just having mechanical components is not a robot. Go back this way. Um. So what the heck can I do from here? Life robot is the same as a not real life robot. You could have a robotic arm or something. That doesn't mean that you're part robot. I don't know what to do about this guy. No, you can't be a real life robot because you're a human. No! Get out of here. Oh, I can't go back this way. Oh. Where do I go? Saba has been using the biology of this world to create new biological weapons. It's no wonder he has a menagerie of nightmares locked up in his deep freeze. Okay, I, th I think I know what I need to do. Let me put this down. Got my alien device. I think. Well, let's just see. Let's see what order I need to do this in. Artifact. Come on, bomb. Hurry up. Maybe I need to do this before shooting. Oh. Well, I haven't had that happen. C polygon dot C. Divide by zero during render. Hello. Okay, let's restart DOS box. It's uh, basically like a DOS emulator. It's what you would use to play DOS games on a 64-bit computer.
try it again. We're going to shoot, and hopefully Gro grab that bomb. Give me bomb, please. Without crashing. I've picked up the bomb before, though. Why is it having so many issues? Well, maybe I'll do it in a different order. Maybe I'll pick up the bomb first and then shoot the missile. DOS is a 16-bit operating system, though it can run in like extended 32-bit mode. Um, and so 16-bit programs don't run at all on a 64-bit processor, or 64-bit windows. So you have to use like an emulator. With uh, like an older 32-bit windows version, you could just run a DOS program because there was backwards compatibility. Oh no, I'm not going to shoot the missile first, I'm going to grab the bomb first. Remember to do this in the right order. Nope. A big gun! Okay, that's weird. A bomb! A bomb! The diamonds! Yeah, I know. Stop that. No, 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 no. Fire, please. Drop it right here. I guess not. I guess I need to pay attention to that timer. Oh, oh so that's like five seconds, right? Oh, that's... I can't do it in this order then. Move away! Hmm. So I have to in that other order. Maybe it's not because I shot the missile first that I crashed. Maybe it's because I was holding the alien device. Let's pretend that. So I have anything in my hand. Let's try and get this bomb. I don't understand. Uh. 
Oh, it's a half hour early, but I might just call it a break for now and try and troubleshoot that um, before next week. I have no freaking idea. Restart up that. Oh. oh, so I don't want to run restart up that. <laughs> oh. This will delete everything in your save game directory. This will not delete individual save games. Why would I ever need to do that? I don't know why would I ever want to do that. I'm fairly certain that... No, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing with this. I had figured that I would pick it up, drop it off where the monster goes, uh, while it is away, but it just doesn't, I just don't have time to if I do it like this, so. No, I thought I dropped it. I can't, I can't move. If I pick it up and immediately try and move, does it, or, or drop it, does it let me move after dropping it? Or am I always locked in place after dropping it? Give me that bomb. put it down, I can't move. So, regardless of how I wanted to do this, this is not the way. This is not the way. Um, hello? Can I load my game back? Nope. Nope. I think it's frozen. So, maybe back on the ship. I can disable the bomb. Do I have to pick up the bomb to do that though? So let's see. So that bomb surely is number four. Let's just get the bomb and run in here. Maybe we can do something. A bomb! A bomb! Okay. 
Okay, I don't know what I'm supposed to do if I can't drop it, though. I should have dropped it like over here though, right? Okay, let's go watch. Wait, did I just drop the alien cube and not the bomb? Legitimately, I have no idea what to do there. Um, what? Um, yeah, we're gonna come back to this. I'm gonna let this marinate and try and figure out what I need to do next. It's clear that we somehow have to do something with the bomb to kill this thing, because it's immune to our gun. Maybe if I'm holding the bomb and it picks me up, I can somehow drop the bomb into its mouth? I don't know. I had originally figured that what I needed to do was distract him, have him go over there, get on the platform right here with the, both the bomb and the alien device, because I thought I could use the alien device while holding the bomb. Uh, and then when it starts coming back here, teleport over to the other side, plant bomb, teleport back, run back into the ship, shoot another missile to make him go back there, and then somehow blow up the, the bomb on that side so it's not blowing up the ship or anything. But I can't do any of that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Totally not understanding this puzzle. Yeah, I'll come back uh, next Tuesday and just try and or Thursday, next Thursday, and try and figure this out, so. Uh, that's it for me for tonight, I guess. Um, I will be streaming Saturday morning. I'm still not 100% sure what I'm doing, if it's going to be Soldier of Fortune 2 or something else. But we'll see. See ya. And thanks for, thanks for watching, guys. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, 